While in college, Chubby went on to win Miss New Jersey USA 2017. And in the same year, she also placed first runner-up for Miss USA 2017. Since then, Chubby has been pursuing a career in acting and modeling and has become an inspiration for many South Asians in the fashion, entertainment, and creative spaces. Chubby has brought so much energy to all of our calls from the first one to the last, and we know how excited she is to be here with you all today. She's gonna to talk about navigating unknown waters in her own life, as well as what has made her who she is. All right, so please join me in welcoming with a huge round of applause, our 2022, 22 plus YJ keynote speaker, Chavi Wal. Hi, thank you guys so, so much for your warm welcome. And thank you so much to the YJA team for inviting me here today. Honestly, the last few days have been so wholesome and just so warm. Like you guys have made me feel so welcome. So thank you so, so much for that. When I found out that this year, the convention theme was navigating new horizons, my initial thought was, <laughs> where do I begin talking about this subject? Like, I could literally write a book on this topic because, you know, most of my life has been this series of being put into unknown environments and then somehow trying to figure my way out and almost like walking a journey while not having a map and creating a map and walking the journey at the same time and then getting to a destination only to then be thrown into the unknown again and then have to repeat that process over and over again. So I would say the very first instance of this was when my family decided to move to the United States. So my family came here when I was four years old, and as the eldest child, that was my first instance, my first challenge was learning how to balance my new Indian American identity. How was I gonna stay close to my roots while adjusting and you know fitting into this American environment so I wanna ask you guys a question first. How many of you guys grew up bringing Indian food to school for lunch? <laughs> okay, almost everyone. So, you know, I remember this one thing that happened early in my childhood that I feel like really shaped who I've become. So it was the start of kindergarten and I brought Indian food to school for lunch. Now we had just changed seats and I was sitting at a table with all new people. I didn't know anyone there. And it was lunchtime, I took out my lunchbox, took out my roti, took out my sabji, my day, my mom kept, like, kept me like a full on Indian meal. And as I'm having lunch, I notice it gets really quiet. So I look up and I see three very confused faces staring at me. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'm like, what's going on, what's up? And one of the girls blurts out, ew, what are you eating? And then another one says, yeah, why does that look so weird? What is that? That looks gross. And then a third one says, yeah, what's that smell? Why does it smell like that? And for the first time in my life, I felt embarrassed, bless you, of Indian food. <laughs> um, I felt embarrassed of Indian food. So I went home that day, I didn't finish my lunch, and my mom asked me, why, why didn't you eat your food? And I said, well, mom, the girls at my school are making fun of me. I don't wanna bring any food to school anymore. Can you pack me like a sandwich or something? And my mom said, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna to give you a little something extra that I want you to share with these girls at your table. So reluctantly, I was like, okay, fine. I went to school the next day and it was lunchtime. I took out my lunchbox and I saw pakore. Now, guys, I love pakore, okay? Especially the sweet kind, that is my favorite. So I took out my lunchbox, I was super excited, I started eating, and again, I look up and these girls are staring at me, like, what are you doing? And I said, hey, you know, um, my mom actually kept some of this food for me to share with you guys. It's really good. If you guys wanna try some, you can. And you know, that kind of made them a little curious. So they said, okay, and they tried some of my food. I kid you not, from that day on, these girls wanted a little bit of my lunch every single day because of how much they liked it. And I'm very grateful to my mom for helping me navigate the situation because at a very young age, I learned two very important things. Number one, that I didn't need to shy away from or be embarrassed of who I was in order to fit in. And number two, if I owned and embraced who I was first, other people would not just accept that, but 
Maybe they would even join in on the celebration. Now, that is really where I would say my ship sets sail. Now, all of us here are in our 20s, right? And our 20s are a very pivotal time in our life. It is the first time that we're really on our own. We're navigating so many things. We're navigating relationships. We're navigating identity. We're navigating finances, adulting, careers. So I want to ask, how many of you in this room have always kind of had an idea of what you wanted to do and are pursuing that now? So by a show of hands. OK, that's a good amount. Awesome. OK, now how many of you here are doing something that your parents wanted you to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. And how many of you here are doing so, or are still not quite sure what you want to do and are kind of figuring it out? Okay. So for those of you who raise your hand for that one, I belong to that group too. So I feel better knowing that I'm not alone. Now, if you know of me prior to today, you may know me through social media or through my pageant journey, but growing up, I never imagined pursuing what I'm pursuing today. Actually, growing up, I wanted to be a doctor, but very quickly, I realized there would be a certain amount of blood and cutting people open involved, and I just wasn't sure that that was the best path for me. So I crossed doctor off the list. Fast forward a couple years later, I decided I was gonna be an astronaut. And I really wanted to be an astronaut, you guys. I begged my parents to buy me this $300 telescope I saw in a Toys R Us catalog, which I am pretty sure was a toy because I saw the full moon in front of me and then when I pointed the telescope in that direction, I saw nothing. <laughs> so thank you to my parents for watching this, for always supporting my dreams. But I was very serious about this. And as you can tell, today I'm standing in front of you, quite not an astronaut. So what happened, right? Two things. Number one, physics. I sucked at it. And I, it was like my worst subject in school, and I realized that in order to be an astronaut, I needed to study physics. So immediately, no. But the second, and probably the more significant reason behind why I am not an astronaut today is push-ups. Yeah, so I think we can all agree push-ups are awful, right? At the time, I couldn't do push-ups, and I saw there was a physical requirement to being an astronaut, and I needed to do a certain amount of push-ups. So immediately, eh, astronaut was off the list. Now, a couple years later, I decided I was gonna be an international diplomat. I loved learning languages, and traveling, and learning about other cultures, but I, I realized that it would require a lot of time away from home, and I wasn't sure I wanted to do that either. So finally, I decided that I was gonna pursue marketing and become a marketing manager. So I decided to study marketing at Rutgers University. If anyone's from Rutgers, give a shout. Woo, <laughs> Rutgers, okay. All right, so I decided I was gonna to go to school and study marketing. But then, two years into my time at Rutgers, something happened that changed my life forever. The next game I'm announcing is the first runner-up. She is Alexandra Lockman, Charlie Murray. This Even when I watched that back, that was probably one of the happiest days of my life. And it took a lot of work to get to that point. I decided to dedicate a year of my life to getting into the best possible shape I could, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally. And I learned so much about myself through that whole process. And that work helped me out at Miss USA as well, where I got first runner up or second place. And you know, it's so interesting because I've never really spoken much about this publicly, but you know, online people thought that, oh my God, this is great, this is such a great achievement. Very few people knew what I was struggling with behind the scenes. 
And after Miss USA, I felt lost. You know, Miss USA was such a high. It was like a dream come true. And to make that transition from having this incredible experience to coming back to being a college kid was hard. Like literally, one minute I was on stage with Pitbull touching my arm, and <laughs> the next minute I was walking over to the Rutgers Business School trying to take this supply chain management exam that I hadn't even studied for. So it was tough. And you know, I still love marketing, but I didn't know if I wanted to be in a corporate setting anymore after graduation. I just felt lost and confused. So I asked my parents what I should do. And like any Indian parents' advice, <laughs> this is what they told me. You need to finish your degree first, beta. Pursue whatever you want afterwards. But degree to zaruri hai. Degree is necessary. So I'm like, all right, okay. And then I went back and I completed my degree. Now, my friend knew that I really wanted to explore this newfound love that I had for the camera. So she suggested, hey look, you have this platform for Miss USA. Why don't you just start posting on social media? Just post every single day. And I was like, what do I post about? She's like, I don't know, figure it out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I just started posting every single day. In a couple years time, I graduated Rutgers with my BS in marketing, which stands for Bachelor of Science, by the way. Um, so I graduated Rutgers, and I also amassed a following on social media. And I decided now that I had my degree and I could do whatever I wanted to, I was gonna try out acting and pursue my love for the camera. There's just one problem. Everyone in my family is accountants. So I didn't know what acting entailed or what I needed to do for that. And I would say that's truly when I started into this journey of figuring it out and the unknown, right? So there's this really great quote that I love by Deepak Chopra, which is up on the screen right now. And it goes like this. The known is nothing but past conditioning and familiarity. The unknown is the field of all possibilities. It's filled with excitement, adventure, magic, and discoveries. But that's not to say that the unknown isn't scary or confusing. And just like when a ship is out at sea, it's hard to know what challenges you're gonna face or what lies ahead, or even if you're going in the right direction. I mean, look at Christopher Columbus, right? Like, he wanted to go to India, where'd he end up? <laughs> and what I've realized through my journey is when you're in uncharted territory and when you don't really know what to do, it's helpful to have a GPS. So I want to share my GPS with you guys today. And I'm going to start off with North. So North is your North Star. If any of you guys are familiar with the story of the early explorers, you know that the North Star was the bright, it's, you know, a very important thing for them. For early travelers, they used it as a way to help them find their way. And it's the brightest star in the sky. And it's also very constant because it's so far away. Do you guys see my astronomy stuff paying off right now? <laughs> uh, so it, you know, as a result, so many people relied on the North Star to help them find their way. And it took on this representation and it became a beacon of hope and of inspiration. And just like the early travelers relied on the North Star to find their way, it's important to have a North Star in your life that guides you, that tells you where are you going, but more importantly, why are you doing what you're doing? Because motivation, as much as I love motivation, does not last forever. And when, th when things get hard, you need to have a reason to keep showing up. And if you have a strong reason why something is important to you, you're gonna keep showing up. I'll give you an example. So right now I'm a model, I'm an actress, and I'm a content creator. And my favorite part about my jobs is that I have a lot of freedom. Every day looks different. Some days I am, that is my cal calendar for May. Some days I have an audition to shoot. Some days I have a shoot on set. Some days I am shooting content. Other days I have meetings all day talking to my team. So, and some days I'm traveling. So there's a lot going on and there's a lot of variety in my day, which I love. But the downside of having all this freedom is there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of rejection. And many times you don't even know if you're heading down the right path or if where you're going will even lead to anything. Now, 
Just yesterday, I actually had an audition that I shot, that I filmed in my hotel room. And here's how it went. So first, to get an acting audition, you need to have an agent or manager because many of the big roles on TV come through an agent or manager. Then casting decides if they like your look and if they want you to audition. Once they like your look, they send you an audition so you have the opportunity now to buy for this role. Once you get the audition, you prep for it. I spent about four hours prepping for this yesterday and I probably have like two more to go. Then once you've learned it, you record, you set up your studio, your lights, your camera, you film it and then you edit it and then you send it. And guess what happens after you send it? You wait and you wait and you don't hear back. But sometimes you do hear back and that's called a callback. And a callback means that you do this whole process all over again. And then if you get shortlisted from that, you do a bunch more things before you actually book the job. The point here is on a day-to-day, -day, you hear more no's than yeses. Now, how do you keep going? How do you not let doubt settle in? It's by having a clear vision of where you are going and why that is so important to you. It's not just important to get clear on why something is important to you, but also to get clear on why in your life. Why do you do the things that you do? I want everyone to close their eyes, please. All right, now that your eyes are closed, I want you to raise your hands if you've ever felt the need to do something, not really because you wanted to, but because you felt like other people would judge you if you didn't, or that you would be left out if you didn't. And raise them high. Okay, now I want everyone to open their eyes. Keep your hands up and open your eyes. Yeah, everyone, right? And that's not a bad thing. If you think about it in history, human beings realize this, right? Our survival depended on us being in a community and working together and fitting in. Otherwise, how would we survive on our own in the wild? And we brought that to us, we brought that with us to this day. But there's a downside to that. Because sometimes when we do that, we stop listening to ourselves and we stop living by things that are important to us. Now, when it comes to embracing yourself, a lot of us here understand the struggles between being Indian and American and how challenging that can be. We grew up in a way that's very different from our parents and not many people realize how hard it can be to juggle two different cultures, but also sometimes two cultures that have very opposing values, right? Like, you know, for example, I'll give you how, an example of how this plays out in my life. I choose to not drink alcohol. And many times when I'm at events, I am the only one not drinking. <laughs> and a lot of times people, I get met with like confused stares, like, wait, you don't drink, how do you have fun? I'm like, uh, I don't know, I just do. <laughs> how do you relax? How do you unwind? How do you do all these things without alcohol? And I have made it very clear for myself why I don't want to participate in that. And this isn't about drinking or if you choose to drink or not to drink. But the point here is, I want you guys to really question why you do certain things and get clear on whether or not that makes sense for you. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I would like to look at myself in the mirror and know that I've always lived true to who I am and lived authentically to who I am. Not change myself or do something that I didn't want to to make other people feel better or to fit in. And your values serve as an anchor. And when your ship is out at sea in unknown territory, if you don't have an anchor, guess what's gonna happen? When the wind blows, you're gonna go with the wind. And sometimes that's gonna take you to a place that you may not really enjoy being in. So get clear on what your why is. Now, the next point I wanna talk about is W, which is winning over your mind. If you can control your mind, you can do anything. And I know that sounds like a very bold statement to make, but it's very, very true. I want you guys to consider something. What would life be like if you thought life was a struggle? How would you approach it on a day-to-day? -day? You guys can shout out some answers. What would life feel like? Life is a struggle. It would be hard to wake up. Hard to wake up. What else? Complain a lot. 
Would it be unfair? Would it be challenging? Now, I want you to think, what's life gonna be like if you thought life was a party? Would life be fun? Would it be exciting? Would it have an awesome DJ like the one we had yesterday? Cause I, that's what my life would look like. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Uh, and what would life be like if life was always working out in your favor? Would everything be a learning lesson? How would you approach it differently? Now, you know, skiers know this really well. I'm not a skier, by the way, but I know of some skiers. And when you're, I've heard, when you're coming down a mountain at very high speeds, you don't want to hit a tree, because that hurts. <laughs> and the surprising thing is, though, when a skier's attention is on not hitting the trees, they are more likely to hit the tree. But if their attention is on the clear gaps, they're more likely to go down the clear gaps. It's because our mind does not understand negatives. Our mind just understands focus. If you're focused on not hitting a tree, your focus is actually on the trees, and that's where you're gonna go. If your focus is on the clear path, it's, that's where you're gonna go. So the point here is, don't focus on the obstacles because that will amplify the obstacles. Focus on the solutions, the clear paths, because that is where you're gonna go. Perspective is everything in life. When you're out in uncharted territory, right? If there's a storm and your focus is on the hopelessness that is the storm and all the things that are going wrong, how many of you think you're gonna make it out of that storm? I don't think it's possible. But if, if there's a storm and you focus on being calm, you focus on the solutions, you focus on getting out of this problem, the chances of you making it out to the other side are much higher. So how do you adopt a breakthrough perspective? This first one, gratitude journaling, is something that changed my life forever. I try every single day to make a list of three to five things that I'm grateful for. And the way that gratitude works is it is impossible to feel gratitude and feel hopelessness and fear at the same time. It's just not possible. And when you do this every single day, you train your mind to look for the bright side. And when you train your mind to look for the right, for the right, right side, it becomes second nature. And anytime you're dealing with obstacles in your life, your mind will instinctively go to, okay, this sucks, but what is the positive here? What can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? And you start to become more solution oriented. And that's the same thing with the next point, which is try to find the silver lining, even if it seems hard. And train yourself, because the hard things in life are sometimes the best things for you. And it all just takes practice. And now I want to take you guys through my final point, which is S, surrendering. If you guys are into astrology here, I am a Capricorn sun. And if you're not into astrology, I'll explain to you what that means. It means that I am a planner. And I do not like to go with the flow very often. But there is this beauty that comes with surrendering. And it's a magic that I get to experience every single day. So I grew up a chubby kid. And I often faced a lot of criticism from my extended family. And as a result, I never really felt comfortable in my skin and in my body. But when I decided to compete for Miss New Jersey USA, I decided I am going to get into the best shape of my life because I want to feel confident when I'm on stage. So I decided I was going to start going to the gym and I was going to start lifting weights because I saw this one girl's post on Instagram and she was like, she was talking about how amazing weightlifting was. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this a try. The problem was I had never stepped off of the cardio machine in my life. So for the first time, I was like, all right, I'm gonna try out this weightlifting thing. I walk into the weight section, pick up the five pound dumbbells, and I start working. And I want you to picture this. An 18 year old girl in a gym, in the free weight section, not knowing what she's doing, surrounded by 220 pound bodybuilders all around her. It was scary and it was awkward and it was intimidating, but I just did what I had to do and I went home. And then I showed up again the next day, I did what I had to do and then I went home. And I did that again and again and again. And I didn't see change happen after one day. I didn't see change happen after two days. But after consistently going to the gym and lifting these weights up, I noticed the five pound dumbbells felt really light. And I progressed to the seven pound dumbbells and then the 10 pound dumbbells. The point here is 
I didn't see change happen after one day. But by consistently showing up, I was adding to the progress that I was making. And when I look back a year, like from the point I started, I saw all how far I had actually come. I actually became a certified personal trainer a couple years after that. So that is the power of consistency and of having faith. You're not always going to see the fruits of your labor. And you're not always going to see progress. But that doesn't mean you stop. You keep going and you have faith that it's going to work out. So this is my compass for you guys. When you are navigating unknown territory, find your North Star, embrace who you are, win over your mind, and finally surrender. So I hope this helps you a little bit more on your journeys into the unknown. And I just wanna emphasize one last point. This is your journey. Now, as someone who's, most of whose work is on social media, I understand that social media plays a really big role in our life. And it's very easy to feel FOMO or to feel like you're not doing enough or being enough when you see what other people are up to. And I just wanna say, you know, this is your path. And it's not fair for you to compare your life, which you have all the information about, to other people's highlights and reels, quite literally. So understand this is your journey and put your racing blinders on. You know, horses have blinders on the sides of their heads so they don't get distracted and look at other people. They focus on their path. Put your blinders on and focus on your path. Now, we've gone over unknown. We've gone over this compass. And now we finally start to see our destination. So what does that mean? Well, just because you see your destination does not mean that the journey has come to an end, unfortunately. Because a destination is just a temporary pit stop. At some point, you're gonna decide, hey, I wanna go deeper into this exploration, I wanna go deeper into this destination that I'm at, and you're gonna want to explore, or you're going to realize that, I don't know if I like it here, I think I wanna go somewhere else. And you're gonna change destinations and go somewhere else. But regardless of what you choose to do, you're gonna be right back where you started, navigating unknown waters. Except this time, you'll have a GPS. <laughs> <laughs>